Nothing stays for long in this house, but all is patient. The morning star is a god on our ceiling. You hold me like a rare world, traveling in darkness and ending in darkness, arriving in infinite light circles. Tonight, tomorrow. We bought this house during COVID lockdown, so we were feeling a bit trapped in England and pining for Italy. With the general feel of the house, we wanted to make something that blended like an English Georgian house with like an Italian color palette in a way. Rob, you were thinking this is like the dream place to have an art studio, and I was thinking this is the dream place as a film location. We ended up shooting a feature film, which I co-wrote, Tell That to the Winter Sea. In London, I would have these studios that were constantly getting shut down, the building got developed, the artists got kicked out. I must have had four studios in six years, and there was no sense of security with studio space, which is why we finally sort of made that leap, really. This is what we call the music room, um, and when we first moved in, the owners said to us it has perfect acoustics. It was built in 1820 and they said it was built with its own set of instruments and they used to give concerts here once a month. Uh, we didn't have a piano here but then my literary agent came to stay and she basically was like, I'm sending you a gift. And one day this piano just turned up and that's the piano over there. It's a good room for a party. Like every time we go to Italy we we smuggle objects in our suitcases. Constantly bringing like Italian vases back on Ryanair. This light we found in a, in a like little a... junk shop close to the Vatican in Rome. Poetry is like fundamental to what we both do. When we first met, we, we wrote a lot on the walls, didn't we? And then over the years, it sort of, we just kept doing it, but it kind of got a bit more fancy. We just sort of have these mottos that kind of become poetry, but become part of our lives. As our family motto for this house, art, labour, love, life, which is pretty good for us. We tried to save and reuse as much as we could that we found in the house. So these kitchen cabinets were like over there, jammed between these 1970s Formica fitted kitchen units and we hauled them out and painted them and moved them and, and give them a sort of second life. So these are like bedside cabinets from eBay for about 150 quid. These are two old French dressers that probably cost 300 quid each that we adjusted the height and put together and went to Swanley where the stone comes in and got a bit of terrazzo for the marble for the top. And we sort of improvised on a really low budget, a kitchen that we liked basically. We invested more in the paint. As the kitchen evolved, then one Sunday I said, Rob, let's turn the clock into a sun. We just end up basically always painting on the walls. walls. Basically. We just can't help it. Um. <laughs> Greta's like the master of colour. <laughs> I think Greta really is the creative director of the house and she started with a really strong idea of a colour palette. And um, I just followed her guidelines and got on ladders and did it, really. <laughs> yeah, I think it's something about playing with two types of the same colour. So this is sort of this very bright green mixed with a more of a bluey green. Something quite interesting about pulling the two together. So you almost have like a natural shadow to the colour. When it's just us, we spend a lot of time um, eating in the kitchen, but then when we made something really good, we come and sit in here. It leads to the front garden. And there's roses by the windows, there's fig trees inside. A bit like a garden room. And this is one of my favourite tablecloths by the most incredible Florentine designer called Loretta Caponi. We have lots of kind of big paintings, but then very, very small paintings kind of to counteract the big paintings. So we have um, a painter that we absolutely love called Julie Goldsmith, and she paints these kind of ceramic ghost-like portraits of poets and historical figures. It's a real privilege to be able to live and work in the same space with your family. 
The art studios are the old sculleries of the house, the old kitchens basically and food storage. And so I have a few rooms, a painting studio, another studio, wood workshop area here. Greta has her writing room. The children have their painting studio. So, you know, we can all, we all come to this part of the house in the day and we all work sort of side by side. My art probably has changed since we came to this house. It probably has become more lyrical. I started painting again a lot more. I, obviously I work with like insulation and light sculptures and urban space and that's been a big part of my work up to now, but I've, living here, you know, amongst the trees, I've started making landscape paintings again, which I hadn't made for decades, which at some point would have seemed like a terribly traditional thing for me to start doing again. But yeah, that's what I did when I was 15, you know, I was obsessed with Turner. This room had this kind of cherry red carpet. We found this headboard, it's a Spanish painted headboard. From um, Peter Barrow, our favourite Ken antique dealer. This is a painting by a friend called Faye Weiwei and it's a me and Robert on our wedding day. Yeah, it sort of lives above the fireplace. I think it's quite like a romantic painting. And this drawing here is a real treasure. This is a drawing by Sylvia Plath, the poet. One of very few drawings Sylvia Plath made, but she made really good drawings. Greta bought that for, with her student loan when she was a student. But what I discovered afterwards was there's actually a love letter behind it, written um, with Ted Hughes handwriting, which is quite, quite a nice surprise. When we decided where we were going to have our bedroom, we were like, our dream is to have a bathroom with a bath where both of us can have a bath in at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> this paint is a clay paint um, called Ballet Shoe. I think we like antiques with a bit of faded grandeur, you know? Something which needs to be repaired or just, we don't mind if it's got a bit of a bash or... No, so you can see it's lived. I like that. This is Lorca's room, our eldest son, who's eight. And then the other room is Lucien's room, who's five. And this room is inspired by this tent that we found on eBay. Um, and the room kind of feels like a tent in a way with this House of Hackney wallpaper and then the ribbons. The fireplace is one of my poems, which Robert painted and I love the line, blown here by the wind. This is Lucien's room, um, our youngest son. And I think we started off with this room, putting the red carpet down, and then we discovered this amazing wallpaper, which is from a brand called Otterline. And it comes in different versions of spots, but they had this red version, which we just instantly fell in love with. And it kind of reminded me of like jazz symbols. Yeah, this room feels really fun and playful and it feels like a children's book to me. Yeah, there isn't a sensibility of getting an old house and fixing it up. Yeah, I think it's about restoring it back to its original beauty. So it's not about sort of necessarily modernizing anything, but just finding the areas and bringing out the hidden magic within them. A house is a dance, really. It, the footsteps of the family as you all move around. And I think that when you know a house, it's when you can wake up in the dark, walk into the hallway, you know where the light switches are before you have any light and you, you know the dance of the house. It's a way the choreography of family life, you know.